Well, Holly. Keep that in mind. This mic here is live. So it it will pick up a little bit, but not everybody. Okay. All right. So uh did the meeting recording pop up? Yeah, it's gone. Okay. All right. So, so welcome everybody. Um how many we got online? Uh five. All right, we got five people online. Great. And I see Melissa typing away. So <laughs> hopefully that's to us. Okay. Um welcome. I'm glad to see that the numbers for the in-person meeting are starting to climb. That's great. Okay. Uh, who, who's new? Anybody new? But you've been here previously. Uh, anybody else? Everybody, everybody's been here before. Everybody looks familiar. Okay, great. All right. The thing I did like about Zoom was I learned who more people was. Uh, Back before COVID, and we met in person all the time. You'd come in, you sit down, and without you did a picture and you got to talk about it, uh, it'd be six months before we could figure out who people were. So, uh, but this is good. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on. I uh, want to say thanks to our sponsors. Our, our sponsor list has changed somewhat. Uh, we've only got Digital Pro Lab and Final Works up there as sponsors. And then as supporters is the Greater New Brunswick Art Council. Uh, more about them as we go on. Um, whoops. Okay. Uh, the uh, social media sites. Uh, by now, you should know everyone. And find out if there's something going on okay we've got a facebook page we've got a website we've got a meetup site uh so uh between those three venues to reach out to everybody zoom since we're not slideshow oh you're not well and we're not seeing we're not seeing the slides and you get that job Thank you for the heads up, guys. Seriously, wrong with this Zoom? There, now we did. Okay. I gotta figure out how to get back to the PowerPoint. Give me just a sec. <laughs> They can see it now. Yep. Okay, great. So, that sounds on. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, um, welcome everyone. Heard that. Uh, uh, here's the new sponsor and supporter page. Okay. Uh, and social media sites. We talked about that. Approval of minutes. Okay. Everybody knows how to do this. Okay. So I'm just going to go right into it. Do I have a motion to approve uh, last month's minutes? Okay. Uh, Larry, uh, Larry, uh, move to uh, approve the minutes. Uh, do I have a second? Ralph seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, all on Zoom, raise your hand. You are saying I thank you. Okay. All right. So uh minutes carry. All right. Uh financial audit report. Uh have we got Dick and Sharon on? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll turn my my screen wait. Um, you gave this last month. Rolling around. Are okay. we discussing it again? Listen, we, we've this I question. talked about this last uh, last right. uh, month, but I'm going to talk about it one more time. And this will be the last time I give this still uh, in the meeting. Uh, the uh, 
Zan and Andy, and neither one of them are here tonight. Uh, on Zoom. I was hoping I'm they here. would be Andy there. No, Suzanne. Here. Okay, uh, here. but uh, we have uh, far Suzanne and Sandy for the hard work that they did doing our financial audit. We have a certificate of appreciation we would like to present, uh, but we're not here in person tonight. I will diligently carry these certificates around with me to the coffees and the next upcoming uh, <laughs> wine and cheese events that we have. And if they go up, then I will present them with their award. But we want to thank the both of them for the hard work they, they did going into the audit. So it's for Suzanne and this is for Sandy. Uh, next, we have the treasurer's report. And I'll let Frank talk to you about the treasurer's report. Okay. Thank you, Victor. My first treasurer's report with uh, big shoes to fill here. So uh, January 1st, our opening balance was $2,400.03. We had some memberships come in, and these were a variety of $30 memberships, $15 memberships for those that were uh, PSA members. We had a couple of family memberships come in, $270. I even had a couple come in tonight. Those will go on to next month's uh, next month's total. Just a general reminder, if you haven't paid yet, uh, we'll take cash, check, Venmo, mail it to me, whatever you want. Uh, just let's get those dues in. We also had 30 cents of interest income uh, uh, from the bank. So total income was $270.30. So we had an ending balance of 2670 and 33 cents. We had no expenses last month. Awesome. Okay. Um, and just uh, to reiterate about membership, uh, dues are due by the Feb February meeting. Uh, if uh, dues are not paid by the time it goes, we have to submit photos for March. Okay. Um, only photos for pay members will be out into the comic category, well, in any of the three categories, and only photos of uh, current up-to-date members and your update when your dues are paid uh, will be forwarded to PSA uh, for evaluation. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Club business. Thanks, Frank. Okay. Club business. We just talked about dues. Okay. Um, right. I'm just, if you haven't paid dues yet, think Sorry. about joining PSA to get that 50 discount. Uh, all right. And then I want to remind everyone that Bill was our member of the year. Okay. Uh, he received his award last month. So, Congratulations again. Last time you'll see the slide. Okay. Dennis got the President Service Award. He's not here. So I will did once again carry these certificates around with me until somebody shows up in person to receive them at either a meeting, a coffee, or a cheese thing, or a photo event. Uh, Anthony got image got the image of the year award. Uh, he's not here in person. Is he online? Okay. All right. Um, and then Dennis was photographer of the year. Okay. I. Uh, so when we see when I see these people at an event, I'll give these awards out. All right. Now I want to talk about how we're doing photographer of the year. Okay. The numbers that you currently see right there are just the uh, photos that were submitted for January and graded by PSA. And then where you see um, I, IOM, that's image of the month. Okay, so if your photo is selected for image of the month, you, you get a peg, okay? If your photo, now, this is an updated slide from the last time I sent 
the slide out to the entire membership to let them know how we were going to do this. Um, if your photo is selected for inner club to go forward to PSA to represent the club in the inner club competition, you get a point for that. Okay. And you see here, uh, these are the people that went forward for PSA Carol, uh, Ralph, Patricia, Dennis, Holly. <laughs> Holly had two photos go forward. Um, Sean, uh, Christina, Barbara, Eric, Sandy, and Brian. Okay. Um, now, remember, these, these point totals are going to be accumulative as things go. The, the numbers you see, the seven, eight, uh, nine, six, five, those are the point totals given from the PSA judge critiquing the photos when we send them in for assignment. Okay. Um, for inner club, you get one point for being selected. And then if your photo is uh, picked for merit or um, honorable mention, there'll be one point for that. Okay, when it comes back. Uh, so and we have two more opportunities this year for inter to participate in inter club for this year. And then I have individual award. Okay. And that that is a column I added uh, this month uh, because it's come to my attention and I wasn't aware of this, but as individual PSA members, you can participate in an individual category, uh, just like you're in a club, except it's you against a bunch of other photographers, okay? Uh, so potentially if your photo is uh, selected um, and awarded points for that, then I could see adding a point there, okay? And, but I don't want to say that that would be only about a third of our club are also PSA members, okay? But then we have a lot of members that are not PSA that belong to the New Bronzeville um, Art League, okay? Uh, so I would think, all the shows that they do at the Art League, if our photographers that belong to the Art League, or if you don't belong to the Art League and you participate in the show, and if your photo gets selected for the show, that would be a point, okay? Then if your photo gets uh, first, second, third, honorable mention, that would be a point, okay? But the thing is, you got to let us know. Okay, you got, you got to do, you know, you got to send, you got to send me an email because I'm the one keeping up the point total. Okay. Um, hey, I had two photos that made it into the show. Great. That's two points. Oh, I had one photo get, get a blue ribbon. Okay. Okay. That's, that's three points overall. Okay. But you just got to let us know. And that's a way because we've always asked. When you get accepted into a show somewhere, let us know, okay? If uh, you receive an award in that show, let us know so that we can brag on you at the meeting, okay? Uh, so uh, the opportunity's there. Uh, and uh, so, and one of the reasons I added that was, and this is how it came to my attention, is uh, we had a member send this email in to us and tell us that, well, they participated in the show, uh, the individual uh, portrait category, and there's more categories than there's just portraits. So I'm assuming you could do nature, you could do travel, same thing, okay? So there's multiple opportunities there, just like there's multiple shows at the Art League that anybody can participate in, okay? And it shows the score they got for the two photos, and they actually sent us the photo that scored an eight because one of the things we said in where we're going to pull the photos from to decide what goes to PSA for inner club last year we were pulling all the photos that scored nine okay well this year 
we're pulling the photos that score eight or nine. Okay, so eights and nines get pulled in for consideration to be sent to inner club. Okay, and we had some hiccups with this last inner club in that we didn't have enough black and white to work with. Okay, so and then we also had, uh, uh, you know, we had some nines, but they were by the same photographer. And you can only you can't send in but one photo per photographer. Up, up to six photographers for color and then the same thing for black and white okay so uh some of the photos that were originally selected uh and the selection committee was anthony and ralph uh anthony and ralph submitted their uh top six photos uh in each category and surprisingly enough about four in each category uh, had been selected by both Anthony and Ralph, and then there was a couple that didn't. Okay, and I was I was the tie breaking vote there, but I only get one vote, so the four that they picked automatically made it in. Okay, and then I looked at the two that Anthony had and the two that Ralph had, and then I picked the two that uh, you know I wanted to vote for, and then that was how it is each. Each photo that went in went in with uh, at least two votes. Okay, um, so just I wanted to share that with everyone and let you know about opportunities to uh, participate. Okay, now uh, with that said, and I don't think I'm there yet, but let me go on. Uh, I. The Art Council. The Art Council has an art scholarship fund. Okay, it's a thousand dollars. Typically, it's one scholarship a year. You have to submit an application, and it can be from you know painting, music, theater, photography, film, dance, ceramics, you know, literature. It's it covers the arts. And based on the application submitted, and it has to be a uh, senior that's going to be going off to college, and they have to be pursuing an art degree, okay? Um, and then the selection committee will review all the applications and select a winner. Well, this year, uh, they have, uh, they were blessed with receiving larger donations, so they're giving three uh, scholarships this year, three $1,000 scholarships. So if you know of someone that is going uh, off to college and pursuing an art degree, uh, let them know about this. And if you are uh, want to share with that young hopeful, uh, just tell them to go to the Greater New Bronzeville uh, Art Council website, and right now uh, the scholarship is the first thing on the website. They can just click on it, and they can see what they have to do. Okay, the deadline for this is the end of the month. Okay, All right. They extended the de deadline because they had two additional scholarships to send out. Okay, uh, the spring art mixer is March 9th. Uh, and with that said. Um, we need some volunteers to help with that. Okay, uh, it's all, it's free to anyone that is a member of the council. Okay, our club is a member of the council. Okay, so uh, and obviously, if you're going to volunteer to do something at the art mixer, uh, you can get in for free. The um, they need. Uh, people to volunteer for the entrance to collect tickets uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and then we need a volunteer photographer. Okay. You got that, Bill? Okay. All right. Now, if anyone would like to sit, it's two hour shifts. Okay. Uh, you don't have to be there for the entire time. Uh, and in a minute, I can read out what the shifts are. Uh, but if someone wants to volunteer to sit at the table and collect money for people that come, because this is a fundraiser for the council, 
This is one of the ways they are able to uh, help with those scholarships and uh, help with the uh, youth photography tournament that we're running for the council. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. The youth photography contest. This is the flyer for it. And uh, I'd hope to have have those here tonight so I could pass a couple out to each one of you so you could go out and go forth and post them somewhere. Uh, but they won't be ready until uh, Thursday. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll see you at, well, I won't even, this Wednesday's coffee, so I won't have it for that. Uh, we'll have to schedule a wine and cheese thing here pretty soon or something but we got to get them out. But down there, there's submission opens 27 February, closes 27 March. The award ceremony is 15 April. There are five categories that the youth can enter. Action, animals, portrait, architecture, and creative effects. Same categories as last year. Any photo that was submitted last year cannot be submitted this year. Um, down here where you see uh, gift card amounts, those that is gift cards from Finer Works, okay? And the council is going to match those gift card values with cash, okay? So whoever the overall winner for the contest is, will get a $200 gift card to our Finer Works plus $200 in cash. Same thing for all your other categories. Now, this is for uh, high school and then middle school. There will only be one overall winner for the entire uh, show, uh, but there will be a first place in each of the five categories among the high school students, and then there'll be a first place and so on uh, for each of the five categories for the middle school students, okay? Um, so if you know of someone in middle school or high school, you got a grandchild or you're mentoring someone, uh, I highly recommend that they enter the contest. Now you can go to our website under, what, what tab is it? It's under upcoming news and events. Upcoming news and events. And there's a link that says youth photography contest. You click on that and you get the PDF. That is, gives you all the info that you need, plus the uh, entry form that you have to turn in. Okay. Uh, it also has two pages of um, links. Uh, the first set of links, I believe, is to, if you're going to submit, um, a black and white photo and it, that all the links are from like four by six all the way down to eight by eight by 10 or eight by 12. Okay. Because the requirement is you have to mat your photo and the mat has to be an 11 by 14 or 17. I don't remember right now, but the mat is a certain size. And then the photo can be any size from four by six all the way up to an eight by 12, okay? So these links will take you to Final Works. Uh, you upload your photo and then it takes you to either the black mat or the white mat, okay? So I, I believe I said color photo or black and white photo. No, the photo can be anything, but the mats are either black or white. One page is for black mats, and the other page is for white mats. Now, they're going to do this at a discounted rate to where mat and photo only cost $8 plus tax, okay? Which, and I went to Michael's, and to get a mat cut for an 8 by 10 um, you were paying close to 9 bucks. So, and that's not even before you get the photo printed somewhere, all right? They're not required to use Final Works, okay? But they can get a discount by going through Final Works. The only way to do it any cheaper is to print it off, print the photo off a printer at home 
and go to Hobby Lobby and buy, buy the mat board and cut your own mat. Okay. Uh, so, all righty. PSA information. Okay, this is where we're going to have to. Um, well, but yes. Can you come up? Okay, so people on Zoom can hear you. Also on the photo contest, we have been gathering um, gift cards from um, local businesses. So we've gathered one hundred and fifty dollars so far. Okay. Um, to add to the the winners. Um, yeah. Last year, besides uh, gift cards and cash, we had some gift cards from local businesses and we we gave slitter bond tickets away uh stuff like that and we we did that kind of like door prize kind of thing it wasn't tied to whether they won a category or something like that okay yeah. so i wanted to let you know we've got 150 dollars so far okay and we we do have a plan to contact some other organizations to see if they will donate um, I did talk with Gary Cooper from Comel ISD, and they are on board. And so when we get the posters ready, if we can get about 10 to 12 of them. Is that all he needs? At this point, yes. Okay. Um, they have schools within Comel ISD, and I didn't know this, that are in counties that we don't have listed for um, participation. Besides Bear and Guadalupe? Okay. So I've asked him for next year if they can give us a list of all the counties that their schools are in, and then we can pass that on to Greater New Braunfels um, Art Council for consideration for next year. Um, get get a number. Get a number. Get okay. a number for me. Okay. okay, we might be able to pull the trigger on that. And then I've reached out via email to Navarro ISD, which is in um, Guadalupe County. My kids went to school there. I haven't heard back from them. And then I'll be reaching out to Seguin and Cibolo uh, as well to see if they're interested in participating. Okay, great. All right. All right. So if anybody has connections with local businesses and you think you can get uh, some gift cards for um, the photo contest, just let me know and we'll add it to the list. And Carol has the um, tax exempt uh, donation request letter that the people can use to. Uh, document what they're donating and make a copy of it uh, so that they can deduct it from their taxes. Uh, we're because it's a art council event that yes. is chaired by the photographic society. Um, we're using the nonprofit number of the art council so that people can write the stuff off their taxes. Okay. So do what? Yeah, 5023C. Yeah. So if you need a copy of that to give to a donor, just let Carol know and she'll email it to you. Okay. I guess I'll sit here for PSA. Okay. All right. Um, any questions from Zoom? Uh, Suzanne is asking, Carol, will you email the donation letter? Uh, Charlotte and Suzanne are planning on uh, helping with the cards. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Um, whoop, I gotta go backwards. Uh, okay, so uh, I did part of that PSA, Carol did it. Uh, Dennis is was going to talk about inner club, uh, but because of the sound problem, I Dennis has submitted the 12 pictures, six uh color, uh six black and whites. Uh, you saw the names of the people that were submitted earlier when I was showing you the photographer of the year uh, point page. Uh, the only thing I will add is, Daryl, one of your photos was in the running to go in the black and white category, but we do not have a waiver from you giving PSA permission to post that photo. I sent it to Dennis. Last week, uh, with Dennis, as of today, didn't have it. No, I didn't get it. We had we had to move forward, but if if you sent it to him and he's got it now, the photo that was in the running this time will be in the running uh, for next dinner club. 
Okay. But uh, he even called you. We, we thought you were out of town on vacation, possibly Sicily. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I, I'm glad you're here tonight. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll call him and see what's. Yeah. And with that said, um, what I'd like to have happen is, uh, Dennis, if you'll email me the uh, waiver form, I'll email it out to the entire membership. We really need everyone to just submit that so we can have it on file, okay, so that we don't run into this situation again, okay? All right. Because uh, I know sometimes people are on vacation and they uh, leave their cell phone off while they're gone. <laughs> so, all right. So, Dennis, was there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, except that, is anybody hearing me? Hello? Hello, we can hear you online. Oh, you can? Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, the only thing is that the next one round is uh, February, or I'm sorry, is April 15th. So I'll be sending out an email and asking for submissions. Uh, and they're going to have to be to me probably by about the 20th or the 25th of March. But I'll send that out. April 15th is the next one. I don't know if anybody heard me or not. Everybody heard you. Everybody heard you, Dennis. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And we got the March meeting uh, right before that, but we'll be moving on that. Okay. So, so Victor, just for clarity, are the eights and nines automatically considered, or do we need to submit them? The eights and nines are automatically put into a folder. And then if you got an eight, you have to submit the updated photo with the judge's comment. What we'd like you to do is take the judge's comments into consideration. He gave you an eight and gave you some critique to where, what it would take for him to give you a nine. If you, if you agree with the critique and you think, yeah, that could possibly make my photo better, then rework the photo and send it to us, okay? And then we'll use that one instead of the one that got an eight. Okay. Um, the nine, uh, we're just going to use as is. But if uh, you know that you got a photo that had, had a nine and you think you could make it better, you want to submit that in lieu of the one we have on file. Okay. You're welcome to do that. Because sometimes when we critique them in here, somebody will say something and somebody, yeah, I can see where that might help. And, or no, I like it the way it is. And either one of those two is fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Victor, I just sent you the PSA then, release um, for the PSA youth showcase. Yeah. Um, Victor and I talked offline and um, given where we are in the program, which they kick off their youth showcase in October, um, and they close it in April. So we're really close to the deadline. So we did decide that we would work with the New Braunfels High School this time around since it's our first time through and we can get our hands around what it's gonna take to get everything together and get submitted to PSA. I have talked to um, Dan Dunn at New Braunfels High School. They're on board. He's gonna start working with the students there to put together um, their, uh, photographs in each of the six categories, and then he'll be sending those over to us by March 31st, and then um, we'll submit to PSA uh, by April 6th. So more to come, but they are, uh, he's excited, and he said that his students are going to be excited that they get to participate in a national program. All righty, and for us, just working with one school, we're trying to keep it simple uh, so that we don't get overwhelmed and if we can get through the process successfully with one school then next year we hope to expand that but the problem is a school can only participate with one photographic 
organization. One club. I, we one can club. we can support multiple schools, but they can only have they can only be supported by one club. And the other thing that we did, there's a print and a digital um, submission. We did limit it to digital because we don't have time to go through a print selection process with them. And we have to submit the um, entries from the club directly. They can't submit the entries directly from the high school. So um, it'll make it easier this time around to work with the digital. And then we wanted to run it concurrent with um, the Greater New Braunfels Youth Contest, but unfortunately, it's it, the timing is not going to work out for us, and it's probably not going to work out for us each year. But we will we will put together some plans to be ready beginning in October, so that we can solicit uh, more more high schools to participate potentially um, based on the outcome of this. So is that the one club is that a UIL requirement or is that just a? It's a PSA. Requirement. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Carol. All right. Upcoming events. Uh, this Wednesday is uh, what used to be coffee, cameras, and conversation is now called the three C's. Okay. Um, at Panera at Creekside, uh, seven thirty start time. Uh, we'll probably go to about ten o'clock. So. If 7.30 is too early for you, join us at 8.30 because we'll still be there for a little while. Okay. All right. Then uh, I, I'm doing a team photography workshop uh, this Saturday. Okay. Uh, if you know of a teenager that's interested in photography, I've got uh, three slots open. Uh, if you contact me, and say, hey, I've got a niece, a nephew, or whatever uh, that's interested in photography. Uh, we can work. We can work it out. The class is free. Uh, the it's uh, introduction to photography. Okay, uh, how to best use the program modes on the camera. Now, uh, this iteration is gonna starts at nine o'clock, goes till eleven o'clock. Uh, and then um, it's at the meeting room of the GVEC uh, satellite office in shirts, okay, which is just down the road from uh, Clemens High School, okay. You just go down the next block, four-way stop sign, uh, and you'll see the uh, across the street from Arlen's Grocery. All right. But, but if you know someone that's interested, give me a call and we'll see what we can work out. All right. Uh, Digital Pro Lab on the 22nd has their photo nights. Uh, this is an artist talk. Uh, there is a $25 fee for this uh, if you're interested in going. Okay. Uh, on the 25th, uh, there's a photography walkabout if you want to get out, okay, Crown Ridge Canyon. Uh, this is being put on by the Parks and Rec uh, Division uh, of San Antonio. It's a free event. You have to go on, uh, what is it, Eventbrite? Eventbrite? Okay. Uh, and look it up and register for it. Okay. For our community outreach, uh, the West Side Community Center has agreed to let us use their meeting room uh, four Thursdays, uh, once a quarter, to do a uh, introduction to photography class for whoever wants to come. Now, for us, it's going to be a way of letting people know about the club, okay, while also providing a photography class, okay. Um, and that will be from uh, 6.30 to 8.30, I think, each of those nights, okay. Uh, now, we're talking, that here? no, it's not here, it's the West Side Community Center. It's on the South Side. 
Okay. Uh, it's this side this of the prison, the new prison. Yeah, the jail. Yeah. yeah, it's this side of the jail. And in in fact, it's next door to the fire station, oh, which is up okay. from the jail. Okay. Um, now, with that said, um, and that's kind of an education thing. Uh, education here, Ralph has volunteered to come in at six. Okay, meeting starts at six thirty, but he's volunteered to come in at six and uh, do Q and A or or uh, Lightroom demo uh, training. Okay, so if you're interested in uh, asking questions about how to do certain things in Lightroom or just want to see a demo uh, on Lightroom, uh, come in come in at six. He'll be doing that from uh, six to about six twenty-five. Okay, uh, six thirty. We'll kick off the meeting. Okay, open discussion with Frank. Used to, we'd go around the room, see if anybody had anything to say. Uh, I'm going to adopt a new approach, and I get to pick somebody that gets to talk. Okay, so Frank is going to Q&A with us. Thanks for coming, Frank. Oh, thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I didn't okay. get I didn't get your bio, but that's okay. No, I'm just I'm Frank. That's all right. a, that's all, all right. I need. So, okay. So uh, the board has been talking about educational things. Victor talked a little bit about some different things. So we want to try something different today. Talk about pictures. So we're going to look at a few classic, famous, iconic photographs and talk about these pictures. Composition, lighting, what was the photographer thinking? What was the situation? And hopefully this will be inspirational for us to, to understand what was what was going on in some of these famous photos. Give us some feedback at the end. Give it to me, Victor. Does this help? Is it valuable? Do you want more of the same, something different next time? Let us know at the end. So let's jump right into it. So this is the famous picture of Winston Churchill by Yusuf Karsh, made in 1941. So let's start with a story. Karsh traveled to Canada to speak to the Canadian Parliament. I'm sorry, Churchill traveled to Canada to speak to the Canadian Parliament. Karsh was already a famous portrait photographer, and the government made arrangements to have him do a portrait of Churchill. But he had five minutes. That's it. That's all they would commit to was five minutes with Churchill. So you can imagine as meticulous and detail-oriented as Karsh was, he set up in the room, he got everything right, he did some test exposures, he got his lighting. Of course, 1941, there's no speed lights or, or strobes or anything like that. So, uh, so he set everything up and Churchill walks in the room and he's surprised. He doesn't know that he's going to have his portrait done. And so that's a bad start right away. And then he has a cigar in his mouth as he usually does. Well, Karsh doesn't want the cigar in his mouth because that makes for a bad photo in Karsh's opinion. So he walks up to Churchill with an ashtray and Churchill says, no. So Karsh says, with all due respect, and he pulls the cigar out of Churchill's mouth, out of the prime minister's mouth, goes back to his camera, Churchill gets mad, he scowls, click, and, and Karsh has his photograph for the ages this and this photo is everywhere it even ended up on the money in England for a while it's a very famous photo Churchill calmed down and then they took another photo with him smiling and it was a very nice pleasant photo but it wasn't an image for the ages uh compositionally I look at it traditional portrait three quarters uh having his feet in in this photo weren't wasn't gonna wasn't gonna help the image uh, we see his left elbow cut off a little bit, and that would not have added to the image either. It's kind of hard to see in the room here, but but uh, uh, some of the things like the the chain, the, his glasses, his his handkerchief kind of add to the texture of of his what would otherwise be a dark vest. I see a nice triangle compositionally, his his face and his two hands. Karsh was very famous for posing hands as well um, as far as lighting goes 
when we look at portraits and we want to know where the, the main light was, just look at the shadow under the nose. And so you can see the shadow is off to our left. So that's where that's opposite of where the, the main light was coming from. And I really like how Karsh lit the back wall behind them too, for a couple of reasons. One, I think to separate, create some separation there. Otherwise, his dark suit, his dark jacket would have just blended into the dark background. So he put a light back there for some uh, for some separation. And um and I think the, the woodwork kind of tells that they're in a pretty fancy place too. So that's what I see. What do you all see? Yeah, Bill. This picture is taken in 1941. Yep. Here we are, 2023, and we still haven't solved the same problem. Look right above his eye. You see the bright spot on his forehead. Yep. You take pictures today. Yep. You still get it. Yep. So how do you I fix have, it? How, how do you? How, how, how come we haven't solved that problem? You can you can usually tame it pretty well with, with your post. You know, reduce. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've seen people try to do that, and, and I've seen things in Photoshop where they're like, "Nah, you still." <laughs> okay. Well, okay. some of the modern cameras now they have the Z bar and zebra bars on there, which you can just dry it so that you drop out what's blowing out in white, and that will help diminish that. But what I like about the photograph, if you know anything about Winston Churchill, that's his personality right there. Yep. Cigar, no cigar, that's his personality. That's his dead stare look. Yeah, there, there is one thing there that I look at, when I first looked at it, it's a distraction. And that's in the lower right, that little white stripe there, that in Photoshop or uh, Lightroom, we would have, maybe some of us would have taken it out. I'm guessing that's his speech because he had just done his speech. That might be the text of the speech. That's why I'm guessing why Karsh left it in there. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Well, let's see. Oh, e sorry. Anybody online have something they want to say? Okay. Okay, so now let's go to a very different style of portrait. And this is Igor Stravinsky by Arnold Newman. Now, Newman's style was uh, an environmental portrait. So, so the, the people in the portrait, sometimes they were pretty small in the portrait. And this is the, the example. This is the, the extreme, I think, here, that even though he is so very tiny in this photo, your eye is forced right down to look, to look him in the eye. It, it, with all that that negative space there, uh, I see I see diagonals that denote action. I see curves that denote beauty. I see the lighting from camera left, and and it's the other side of his face uh, is is pretty dark there. But this is a yeah yeah. This is a you don't like it. Okay okay. Too much, too much shadow on the face, you know, because the subject should be the person, not uh, the, the piano. Uh, uh, I, I think, uh, no, I think, I, I think it's good. Okay, okay. I, I, actually, I actually think it's interesting because I just noticed it for the first time looking at it this large here mm -hmm. was the juxtapose of the white wall camera right and the gray you know it, it's just because the way the lighting was set up right right but it gives that contrast there whereas you know you're getting the lighter on his left and, and darker on the right so yep. it's an interesting yep. juxtaposed contrast that i hadn't paid attention to. I, I kind of assumed that was the corner of the room right and they, no, I agree. they got hit differently yeah, no, but agree. of course he's he's almost right there on the one third line yeah of course I uh, appreciate the way the diagonal of the arm comes up and repli it's replicated by that mass of black with the brace. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you didn't know what this guy did for a living, you might be able to guess. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's move on. Another very different photo, another famous photo. Charbot Gula by Steve McCurry. So uh, this was on cover of National Geographic uh, way back then. And uh, it's quite a lot of 
extra space there. Now, now McCurry, let me back up a little bit. McCurry lived in Afghanistan for a while. This is not like, like a street photographer just walking up to somebody and saying, can I take your photo? He lived there. He learned the language. He dressed like they dressed. And that engendered some trust with people to allow him to take their photos. And so he got uh, his, his body of work from those years is, is pretty astounding. Uh, this, is, this is the most famous one here. Uh, th those eyes are just, just piercing. And the green in the background really brings out those eyes. Kind of hard to see here in the room, but the green really brings that out. Um, he, he, what looks like a lot of dead space here, professional photographers that do magazines and, and newspapers and all that, they know to leave some room for the flag of National Geographic or Sports Illustrated across the top, or to say if this was going to be on two pages for some text on the right or some headlines or, or whatever, they, they know to leave a little bit of extra room. To, they know that there's going to be some editing and in, 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 uh, in, in, in to help out, uh, help out the image. Yeah, Bill. I'm not sure. I think this is the photo they got sued over. Really? Yeah. I have not I heard that. I think it is. Yeah. The eyes. The because the the girl ended up suing. Because hmm. they didn't give her any money. Oh, okay. Well, he he went back. But I'm not sure. Decades I know there later. Is a photo of a girl, like in Afghanistan or okay. India or somewhere. Okay. Somebody took, and they they published it. And she ended up suing yeah. and getting money. Okay. Well, it might be. He, he went back and found her. He, he took another photo like 30 years later. Oh, yeah. Same eyes, of course, gray hair by now, but uh, yeah, those same piercing eyes. They, they said that the eyes were, were altered. The color wasn't true. He really? Changed it. Yeah. Really? Huh. Yeah, okay. If you look at the original photograph, the lighting is bad in here, but the original photograph, her eyes are much more brilliant and piercing. Everything, even with all the dead space, everything shoots right into the eyes. Yep. The direction of the pinch of the face to bring the nose up where it all goes into the eyes. And yeah. he altered the whites of the eyes in the original. And I'm not sure about the, uh, the catch eye, the, the white in the eye from the flash. But uh, in the original, there's a little more dirt on the face. It's not showing here. It's a really dramatic yeah. picture. Yeah. It's... So, so, and back in those days, editing a photo was a lot more challenging than now. It's not like just going into Lightroom. It's... Well, as, as a photojournalist, that's a no-no. Yeah. Edit a photo, yeah. that's a big no-no. Yeah. I mean, that's supposed to be pure as is. Yeah, National Geographic was really, really stickler about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's focus, the human uh, focus on, on the on the light spot on the image. Mm -hmm. So you when, when you look at this, you, your eyes goes travel immediately to the eyes, you know. Mm -hmm. So you don't see the empty space so much, you know. But this is what is this the first is is the eyes, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a photo that's the moment, you know. It's just an example of your got your eye goes to the widest portion of the image. And it's basically just a dark image with a little bit of light there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold oh, that thought. Uh, does anybody online have a comment? Okay. All right. Frank, I think we're going to have to uh, okay. pull it there. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks for uh, doing this. Oh, you're welcome. Really appreciate it's my it. My pleasure. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good job. Thank, Thank you, Frank. You. Okay. <laughs> And I'll, Frank had a few more photos uh, to look at, but maybe another time. Another time. Okay. Uh, now, before we get into photo review, okay, uh, I'm going to do what? Oh, nice dog. Okay. Um, oh, gee, I hope I got the right photos. Um, okay, the uh, I want to talk about photo submission. Okay, uh, last month we were able to send the 
assignment, the color, and the black and white. We sent them all in to be scored, okay? Uh, but we have a limit of 30 photos to be scored, right? So last year, what we did when we had more than 30 photos, we just sent the assignment and didn't send anything else, okay? Um, moving forward for 2023, this is the way I intend to handle it, okay? Uh, what I did this month, because how many photos do we have in all, Holly? Um, almost 60. I mean, it was... Yeah. It was a lot of photos, okay? Um, so all of the assignment were included in the batch that went to PSA to be judged. And then I had, there were 19 assignment photos. So that gave me um, 11 slots to fill, to fill that 30 photo pick, okay? So we had more than 11 black and white. And I chose the black and white category to go, to go into to submit those because now that they have broken inner club into color and black and white. Last year, it was just one category and you submitted six photos. You could do three black and white and three color or mix match. Now, they you cannot put a black and white into the color category. And then, so they have their own black and white category. So we're participating in two separate contests, the color contest and the black and white contest. Um, so that put us uh, behind the power curve with having a large number of black and whites to pick from to send forward. So moving forward, priority will always be given to black and white for, to fill that 30. We will always do assignment, and then we're gonna fill the rest of the 30 with black and white, and the criteria we're going to use to select which black and whites go if we don't have it, if there's more than 11, and there was this time. What I use as uh, the criteria was priority went to people that were PSA members, okay? And then once we got past that, I started, started a list of, okay, now, non-PSA members, I got three slots left, so I picked three photos. But those people that I picked this time go to the bottom of the list. So I'm just using the membership roster. So let's say the top three, the first three people that were not PSA members, if they put in a, a black and white, I picked it. And now they go to the bottom of the list. And next month, if I do the same thing, I'll go to the top of the list of non-PSA members and pick those. But I'm also working because I, I was very happy to see we had so many photos, okay? Uh, that is way up from what we've been getting here for quite a few months. Uh, really enjoy the participation. So, I'm, I'm in talks with uh, someone from PSA that potentially I may be able to get a, another batch or some additional photos uh, graded, okay? Uh, and I hope to be able to send the rest of the color and the rest of the black and white in and get those uh, critiqued as well, okay? Uh, but the process is gonna be a little slower than before, okay? Um, because I, I don't get the photos until like two days ago or something like that. And then I send them in. So, uh, Attention the, patrons, computers will be shutting down in the 15th. The library will be closing in 30. If you need to the library card, please come to the help desk at this time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Our meeting is going to eight o'clock. I mean, to to uh, 8.30. At 8.30, we have to end the meeting and put chairs up and stuff like that. So don't worry about the announcements. They've assigned one librarian to stick around with us after the library closes, okay? Um, 
So that's a work in progress. Uh, I want to make it fair for everybody, especially with the critiquing, having to do something with the photographer of the year. Uh, hopefully, uh, I can work it out so we can get approximately up to 60 photos a month critiqued, okay, instead of the 30. All right, so don't, just because we can't send them all in right now, don't worry about it, uh, but know that we're going to have a, until I get that online and can send extra photos, we're going to be using that rotating roster to make sure everyone gets the same, you know, not the same person is always getting their photos sent in. Everybody's getting a shot at it. Okay. All righty. Um, Daryl. Would you would you do us the honor and come up and talk to us about these abstract photos? Well, talk to Holly about it a little. <laughs> Daryl sent in the most wonderful um, thought process for choosing which photo he's going to vote for, and <coughs> went through his thoughts on each one in an email. Okay. Well, all we I did was just rattle on about what I was seeing there. Okay. I didn't think it was. That good. I'll teach you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the end of it, Holly. No more. <laughs> well, yeah. Daryl Daryl will be our guest critiquer tonight. Okay. So warning to the rest of you. <laughs> be ready. Okay. The assignment photos was abstract. Okay. And uh here's the first photo. Uh by Patricia. Uh, is Patricia online? Yes. Okay, let's give Patricia a minute to tell us her thoughts. All of a sudden, I, I, I don't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. This actually was a flower that I cropped, and I used the tone curve to do this work. So it was very simply done. I don't need two minutes. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. Okay, thanks, Patricia. All right. Yeah, uh, one of the things about abstraction, uh, it's so uh, easy to do with a lot of different things. And your post-processing brought that out very nicely. I think uh, one of the things that happens in uh, deciding on on how you're going to abstract is how mysterious are you going to make that? And this is a good example. Uh, one of the things you do when you do abstraction is to find a point of reference someplace so that your viewer uh, gets an idea that maybe you're, you're focusing on some other thing than just exactly what's in front of you. Uh, the, you know, the expressive nature of abstraction makes it a lot of fun. And I think you see the fun in this piece here with her uh, bright colors and contrasted with those uh, darker leaves. Good job. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Daryl. Okay. And Melissa's here. I, as soon as we know you're talking to us, Melissa, I'll mute the mic here. here, here, here. Okay. Um, this was actually just uh, several pieces of paper that I um, not folded exactly, but kind of looped around and clipped together and sat on end with, um, it was sitting on a piece of acrylic with lights beneath it and the camera above it. Um, so, that's pretty much what I did. I was really, Sorry. Melissa, I was really impressed with the, uh, the color in particular. I thought it expressed something of a, uh, of a lighthearted quality, uh, suggesting that the artist here is, uh, 
uh, moving around in space with uh, oh, oh, like Mardi Gras coming up. You know, you, you, you get a range of colors and you get a range of feelings. And the movement of the forms in there was impressive as well. Uh, so it, it led me off into something that was personal, which I guess expressive things can do. But uh, again, it, 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 it was a, uh, I think, a, a very commendable approach you have there. Thank you. Melissa, I, I, I got a tag on to this uh, I, with a question. Um, the the, uh, the lights there, the reds, the greens, and the, the, the light blues. Uh, yes. If that is, was that white sheets of paper that you curved or was it clear plastic that you curved? No, they were white sheets. They were white sheets of paper, and they were sitting on top of an acrylic clear shelf. And then I had a uh, teeny tiny LED Christmas lights underneath it. They're real tiny, like you would use on miniatures. So was it sitting from bottom to top, and that's how the lights yes. were coming up to those yes. inner circles? Yeah, the lights were underneath the acrylic, the shelf. There was a, a clear shelf, and the lights were shoved underneath the shelf. And then I just placed the paper on end so that you could okay. see down through the paper. And then okay. I had the camera up above it. And I had uh, no lights on in the house. I had the blinds closed so that I didn't have light coming from another source. And I basically just shot through the paper. Mm. It's pretty so amazing. I only yeah. see like the circles. The big circles are just the edge of the paper with the lights coming up through. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Yes. Thank you. Okay, voice. Uh, uh, is this one again? I have a, a picture here. They uh, can't hear you. I think Dr. Hudson yeah. might. Oh, I can't show you this. Uh, I would like to say, Hoist, tell me about what you think about this. Yeah, he's. Uh, he's is this yeah. one a canyon here? This yeah. Is deep in the canyon here. And the, the blues in the background. How, yeah. did, how yeah. did you do that? Oh, I, I have DxO and Photoshop and Lightroom. Okay. I switch and Luminar is different thing. Different post-processing uh, approaches. But this is usually uh, in a canyon. You got it brilliantly lit, uh, the foreground brilliantly lit, and uh, it makes that area in the background really mysterious, really, yeah. you know, how deep is it? Uh, how large is it? If you could move back into that, it, you really are drawn into that. And I think that's because of all the lines that are in that red area. Yeah. Impressive. So, uh, uh, when someone wants to give a comment, I would be happy to give something. Is, what is, is that sandstone? Is it the sandstone? Yeah. And then you have the yeah. light, the opening up the top is light coming down through it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then in the second cavity, because you've got a four cavity and you have a back cavity, correct? Yeah. You've got it's just the walls. Mm -hmm. And then this is the heat in the canyon. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Yeah, Antelope Canyon is a fantastic place to shoot. Yeah, I've seen so many images from there. If you ever get a chance, go. you got to pick appointments, though, right? It's an Indian land. Right. Thanks, like, Gordon. Uh, Narrows and Zion? I don't know what that okay. is. That's where you walk okay. down the river. Is Suzanne's with us? Like okay. Hi. Um, I, like Patricia, this is be short and sweet. Um, I've wanted to do this uh, oil and water uh, photography, and this just gave me an opportunity to to kind of play around with that. So, Su Suzanne, we we didn't hear the first part. Of that. We picked up on where oil and water photography. Uh, can you yes. give us the setup? 
Uh, so um, uh, this is just a project I'd wanted to do for a while. So uh, uh, oil and water in a glass dish, and then uh, you know a camera up above, um, and then I have a little heart um, down below, and uh, you know just kind of played around with the the bubbles until I found something that I liked. Okay, thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, that's uh... <laughs> that's a, a a pretty amazing piece when you consider what holiday's coming up tomorrow. Uh, that's what struck me immediately. Of course, we're surrounded by that kind of imagery or or icon, and you've handled the the technique. I think pretty pretty amazing that uh, you could get that kind of of. It, I don't know. You, you, you get a sense of a crowd gathered together with little red eyes or something like that. And uh, that really moves you into a, I don't know, a kind of uh, stuffy, crowded, but happy place. I liked it. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay, Jim. <clears throat> yeah. uh, I was at um, uh, this is a bridge between this is in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was over on the Indiana side taking pictures of this bridge. Most of the pictures I shot were of the bridge itself, but I got a few of the uh, reflection in the river. And uh, just played around with a few. Well, as I was shooting out, I just played around with a few angles and things. The the color that you have there, Jim, uh, was it in the afternoon, evening, morning? What if this this? Uh, no, it was just at sunrise. Sunrise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So shooting for probably an hour uh -huh. as it was changing. Yeah, that that's the color of the you know the background, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, was was uh, intriguing. And uh, as far as um, the bridge, I, I wasn't really impressed with. You know, even though you have a nice diagonal, it's a nice composition. It just didn't move me off of uh, zero. You know, I'm sorry, but uh, but the water, the the water and the color, I, I that was intriguing. That that's 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 where the mystery lied for me. Is that is that the railroad bridge? Yes. Well, actually, I think it's just a footbridge now. I think it's a footbridge now. Mm -hmm. People are running on it. I have a question about your shutter speed. You chose to shoot it fast rather than long to keep the movement in the water rather than soak out the water. Oh yeah, I was just kind of old, so I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention as much about to that. Attention patrons, the library is closing in 15 minutes. The library computers are no longer available. If you have materials to check out or need to get a library card, please come to the help desk now. All right, Eric. All right, so I went to Blanco and took 25 pictures of the Blanco courthouse. I started on one corner, walked five steps, took a picture, walked five steps, take a picture, walked five steps, take a picture till I got to the other corner. And then in Photoshop, I uh, layered them all together to create this monster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Monster. I'm not. I'm. Uh, I think it's it's sense. It gives me a sense of busyness. Here's a building that's busy architecturally. It's vibrating. Yeah, and, and uh, all the kinds of things that go on in a courthouse. Uh, you, you get a, a tremendous amount of energy from from uh, the picture uh, that is translated from what what happens in life. So uh, yeah, it was a you know an approach that uh, I, I, I'm glad you were here to describe that because I was kind of wondering how you picked and chose. Uh, good work. I like the scale of it. I'm not a fan of what the trend is now: shape photography that a lot of street people shoot. Right. But I like this because this gives me almost like a supernatural imagery with the tones and tones over tones, particularly the dark 
surrounding the lights so that it's kind of mystique off in the distance, almost like a mirage. Yeah. Yeah. What time? Uh, this was what is it, the evening or afternoon? This was uh, 12, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. In fact, the trail ride came through as I was doing this. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Eric. Bill. This is just a church seedling in Puebla, Mexico. Mm. It's the church. It's the tallest church in North America. Well, you certainly got the, the, the top of the dome there. <laughs> it's got the tallest. I don't what is it, wherever the bells are. Uh, the bell tower. The bell tower. It's got the tallest bell towers in North America. Well, I don't I, much to say about it. Just a top of a church and a dome. Is it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't have a lot to say about it either, yeah. to tell you the truth, because. It's just kind of a pattern, yeah, is what it is. And sometimes patterns can be pretty abstract, but uh, I didn't didn't really catch that drift here. Okay, we'll have to I go to Puebla to see that. Shot that with an old Canon Seven D I took down there with me. The huh. camera's old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carol. Yep. So I was experimenting and using a studio light box. And I set up um, glass bottles within the light box and then used my uh, micro camera just to do some close-up shots to see what it would look I like the texture of it. That's it. It doesn't show you the brilliance of the color on the screen, but if you see the, the picture in the yeah. um, yeah. right color lens, yep. Is that a combination of square and round bottles? It, uh, they're all. That looks like it has corners on it. Yeah, some of them have corners and some of them are smooth. So wine does come in square bottles too. No, they're just not. random bottles. Okay, the blue. The, the, those are blue bottles. That... Yeah, there's the uh, blue bottles and uh, yellow bottle and um, there is one green bottle in there. Are you using flash? Uh, no, I didn't use flash because it's in a it's in a light box. Okay, so there's just the light from the light, light box. box. Yeah, yeah. The light, the the white areas. Of course, I was drawn to immediately when I when I looked at it, and and then the these curves started vibrating. They 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 seem to be soft, uh, sort of organic, more organic forms, and. Uh, a sense of life struck me as, as though, you know, people are gathered together, shoulder to shoulder, uh, just moving through a crowd like form. Uh, very nice. Okay. Also, um, I want to remind everybody here in the library, the projector is not color calibrated. Okay. So what you're seeing up here um, is is off of what I'm sure you saw on your monitors when you were going through picking them. Okay, so um, if you really want to see the uh, color set, uh, vivid color saturations, uh, you might pull up the website on your phone and uh, go through the pictures. Yeah, like Ralph's doing. All right. Okay, uh, Beverly. And, She's online. and as soon as we got you online here, Beverly, we'll mute the mic here. Okay. Um, this is actually just a picture of our mesquite fire uh, mantle that uh, it has all, when we had it made, we had them leave all of the burls and stuff in it. And so I just was taking a close up of the, uh, the wood. And uh, actually, the blue ref is the reflection I think uh, the TV was on. Okay. Ebb and flow definitely uh, captures a sense of, of movement. Uh, uh, even though the, the 
there's a lot of dark areas in there uh, that they're tied together nicely compositionally, but I, but more, what does that abstraction do for me? And that is to to capture uh, again a sense of movement, life, uh, energy of some sort or nature. Um, yeah, I think you have uh, have caught us there in that in your choice. Thank you. It's impressive. Thanks. It's impressive. Thanks for everyone. Suzanne. Yeah, I was really challenged by this assignment. Um, it, it's helpful to hear and see what other people have done. But uh, what this is, it's not a wine glass. It's actually um, a light bulb. I shot it outside at night. Uh, and then I started playing with filters in Photoshop. And I think this was the red pencil filter that I ended up using. So that's it. You certainly have a, a mood that uh, I haven't seen for a long time. I, I, maybe it's the reds that you, you have, uh, but it does not have uh, an uplifting quality for me. Uh, <laughs> but again, as I look around my life, uh, there's a lot depressing. Uh, not that that's depressing as much as, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, the two red pieces kind of challenge me as to what what you were you, you trying to say and uh what did it say to me okay that was well those obviously were just the filaments and the light bulb filaments yeah, yeah, yeah. okay Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Suzanne. I don't think Sharlana is here. Okay. She's a new member. Okay. Just so, Daryl, you want to comment? Yeah. Uh, I'm plunged into the depths of the ocean, 10,000 leagues. It kind of struck me on this one. Uh, some kind of organic form down there that's fl flipping and floating around. Uh, I know how uh, it was probably achieved, uh, dragging uh, the shape out into those tentacles. Uh, so, it, but the choice of colors, uh, the blending, the molding—I'm not sure where that started from, but it sure uh, it sure gives me that gave me that sense of of I'm I'm lost in the in the ocean and here comes this form out of nowhere uh this was impressive thank you I, I see a face in there yeah a couple of eyes and that long drawn out nose yeah. coming out of there yeah there's a lot of motion in it uh if you look away from the attention center of attention the library is closing in five minutes this is your last call for check out You'll notice that the blue in the background also has motion and has swirls. I don't know whether it's shot on fabric, a dark fabric, and it's just catching some light passing through the object or what. There's a lot of movement in it. What I would say is glass, glowing glass. Yeah, maybe that's why it's so glistening and gleaming and picking out the, the light, natural light around it. Okay, thanks, Gary. Uh, Wow. Yeah, I was, like some of us, very challenged by this. I was struggling to find something, and I found this bottle that had a, a, a marble in it. So I got a macro lens and zoomed in and just focused close. And I said, well, this, this looks pretty hard to decipher. Maybe this will be a abstract enough. And that's what I got. Yeah. It's an old antique bottle. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's hard to decipher. I agree. Uh, you know, I, I studied it and, and looked at it, and the the dark uh, forms around that uh, light area. Uh, I just 
Something I kind was of, evolving there. Kind of challenged to just to try to come up with uh, with a mood or a feeling or. Me too. Yeah. But. Uh, I should have brought that bottle in. I'm just curious. Was it, was there liquid been, in the bottle? At one time, sure. Oh, okay, but. <laughs> Whiskey bottle, and then they had that in there. So when you drank it, you wouldn't get too much shots up. Because of an antique bottle? Yeah, it's like a tan blown glass. It is. Can't get too much whiskey. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ralph. Okay. Terry's not on? No. Okay. Uh, here, here again, a uh, another pattern, I'm afraid. Uh, I can, I can imagine the artist is probably uh, impressed by the growth pattern going, you know, growing. Uh, but uh, as far as any uh, mystery to it, uh, I, I didn't find a lot to to linger over here. <clears throat> Sorry, Gary, but. Uh, Okay. I'm gonna come up. Come on up. So I shot this. Uh, I was just out bird watching and I looked up and it was a really dreary overcast day and it was I just shot up into this tree with all these little balls and it was a really good black and white and then I thought maybe I can turn it around with some fun colors as the background and so I just basically inverted it and added some fun filters in Photoshop oh yeah okay that answers my question yeah how you, how you did it uh yeah the the tree reaching out, uh, being kind of, I was impressed by the way it stopped at the, at the frame, so to speak. Uh, so the search that we do, you know, looking for the answers, going in all directions, all that came, came uh, forth, I think, in, uh, this, in this uh, psychedelic, maybe, but, uh, yeah, that that was a... you're back to your college days, doesn't it? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing I thought of was college days and mixing the colors and the overhead projectors that that to yeah. me looks like a brain that lights up when it's stimulated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought it was blood vessels at first, first yeah. glance. It was the little nerve effect. endings yeah. firing, yeah. Uh -huh. Good parallel. What were you sound close? Thank you. Great. Yeah, just yeah. Good work. Okay, Daryl. Well, <laughs> tell us about your photo. Uh, rain barrel abstraction. <laughs> I looked into the rain barrel and in, in the morning, wow. and uh, it had frozen. Uh, and, and these forms, I think, are probably created because of the rapid freeze that took place overnight. And and. Uh, so I, I guess I, I probably took part of my body out of there that was leaning over to take the picture. But uh, I, I was pretty well impressed by what nature was doing. Yeah. I really didn't. You don't know what it is unless, well, you try to. Yeah. And I, the reason I named it Rain Barrel Abstraction is so that you wouldn't be say, what in the world is going on here? Let's get some answers. We always need answers. Our brain won't let some form just be there. We, we've got to find uh, something. What did you shoot that with, Daryl? Uh, iPhone. Uh, iPhone. I've got it in my pocket here. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what manner or what size or whatever, but well, it didn't come across, obviously. For, for me, what 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 came to mind when I looked at it was like a uh, door or window into an alternate reality. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so it, it 
got it stimulated got the thought process. Yeah, uh, good. So good. Uh, I, I found it really interesting. Okay, and and then I read the title and hmm. So <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> no, you weren't way off. You were right on. All right, thanks, Daryl. On those light crystals, you see the jagged edges at the bottom. Is that a reflection of an eave or facade overhanging there? No, oh, the no, the white, the white areas are a reflection of a roof, just kind of behind it a little bit. Okay, Tony. Tony, it's not online. No, don't see here. Not online. Okay, well, well, here again, say, say something. You know, wrong. abstractions are uh, in, in the photographer's mind, uh, and and that's what he's done. I mean, it, it's not terribly complicated, but uh, I think the very fact is is unique in that he can take something pretty normal, natural, we all understand, reverse it, and we can understand it, but it turns the world upside down, and. Uh, Sometimes we don't like it upside down. I have enough trouble with it upside right. So, uh, well, but it's actually not upside down. That's a reflection. If you're looking at a tree reflection on water. If you look down, oh right yeah, water, yeah. Oh there. yeah, you see the rocks down That's there. Reflection. That didn't come across on it as, it as his eye sees it. Yeah, the trees go this way and the reflection is yeah. this way, and you can see the water. Down below the browns, that's where the brown comes from. Yeah. And the abstracts. Yeah. I, uh, it didn't come across on my computer when I was looking at it. But you're right. Yeah, it is reflection. Okay. Frank. This is at the Botanical Garden, San Antonio. Uh, that that uh, water fountain with the, the arches of the water spraying and I just happened to be walking by. I look down, and and there's just such a, a randomness to the the splashes and the the drops and and all that. And I shot shot quite a few, and uh, but, uh, kind of interesting to me. Yeah, I think it is very so interesting. Uh, no, as you as you walk up the hill, you you come in, you walk up the hill, kind of to the left, and you go beyond that, and the, and there's just this uh, water feature along uh, the side. The back by where the <laughs> Yeah, you know, and the stream goes through, and that's the kids' garden where the water comes up. No, no it's, it's, pearl. it's the other one. It's okay. uh, it's uh, they've got uh, several different fountains where the water's just shooting as mm -hmm. an arch. Just several of those, and oh, they're just making yeah, some the main wall yeah. where the old main fountain used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a you know, stimulating the senses certainly. Uh, I was intrigued by the technique that you use to figure where your angle you what perspective you were looking at but as you described it, it makes sense um, the uniqueness of those uh, ripples you, you got so many different kinds of ripples in there and yet they all at least for me uh, kind of come together as a unity which was comforting. Okay. An abstraction that is comforting. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, James. Um, and he's gonna type because he does not have sound. So I will read for him. Okay. My photo is of a small rug in our house. I took it to Photoshop and just played around with distortion. No expectations, just enjoying working with abstraction in mind. Thank you, James. Wow. Yeah, that uh that really what blew me away was the red that kind of contained, we don't see any red here, but convert the black in there to red and uh, you have it trapping the yellows and, and dark lines within and they're trying to force themselves out of the, this constriction around them. Yeah, and I, that gave me the feeling, anyway, of of uh, frustration, pushing out, trying to to find an escape, struggle, but uh, impressive. Uh, did he say how he got how he did the uh, the color in there? This is rug. Oh, yeah, you, can, you can see a little bit of the red center, far left. Oh yeah, and top right. 
and a little bit uh, slightly left to center bottom. Colored rug. Okay, just just for clarification. Okay, um, the when Daryl said you couldn't see red. Uh, for folks online, I'm sure you can see red because you, you're on color calibrated monitors. Uh, here, when Daryl said the black, what you see is black, uh, mainly about 80% 80, 80 of the black up there is actually red. Okay, the red tone's not coming through on this projector. Um, so uh, just, just so you know, okay. Um, but did he use um, liquify in Photoshop? Give me a chance to type down. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. If you can send us whether or not you use liquify, I'm not sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Ed. Yes, sir. Come, yeah, come up to the mic. Come, come on, come on over here. You you can grab this chair right here and just slide it up. Well, I can do this thing. It's uh, there's just a uh, LCD light panel on the bottom. Oh, Ed, the come, come on around. Come on around. Right here. We want the guys that are zooming to be able to hear you. Oh, you look great. Anyways, it's uh, just a LED light panel on the bottom, a metal grid on top, and then a blue and a red gel. The uh, Edison bulb is uh, suspended, uh, glued to a hot glued to uh, a black plastic stick. And then uh, the white cap on the end is actually the end of the bulb, but I used a black light to make it glow. Wow, impressive. <laughs> It takes a longer to, I, I, I can't imagine myself. Yeah, it took me a few days. And there's, uh, there's like 20 images that are uh, focus stacked yeah. in it. I think I used a very low ASA. I think it, on my camera, it's like 50 and a fairly long exposure on each one. Yeah, talk about science fiction. I mean, you got you captured it there. Uh, you know, I was thrust into outer space floating around with no balloons, but... Uh, Hopefully they won't shoot it down. <laughs> no, I could hardly shoot this one down. It's it's pretty fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Was it the long exposure that gave you the lens flare at the top of the white on the bulb that extended your past the bulb? You see the dots. Above? It's probably a reflection. I had a uh, black black matte thing, and I think that's probably just the light coming up from the LED and just flaring down on the backside. I, the only retouching I did it in Photoshop is just to make sure there are other places where there was some glitter on the background and I just had to paint in some black to make sure all of that was covered. Okay. Cool. Yep, really is. Pretty impressive. Thanks. For handmade, you know. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it. I make it. Yeah. That, that's it for the assignment photos. Thanks very I much, so. Joe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the next photo you're going to see is the winner of the assignment photos. But before I announce the winner, um, I want to talk about um, the um, the workflow of the photos that are being submitted. Okay, for the assignment category, for color, the only requirement is that it be a color photograph. Okay. Um, where it comes from, I guess we really doesn't matter. Uh, black and white, same thing. But for the assignment photos, um, we're going to use what for color, black and white, and assignment photos. Uh, we're going to use the PSA's definition for those categories. With that said. Um, your assignment photo has to be 100% your work. So if it is a composite, okay, uh, whatever photos that are being used in the composite has to be your photo, okay? 
Um, uh, no stock photography is allowed in the assignment photos. Um, if you replace skies, uh, you can replace skies if you shot the sky. Okay. Um, the uh, I, I think that's pretty simple, right? Anything in the photo has to be something you shot. Okay. Uh, and I want to address uh, the issue of AI photography. Okay. Um, there was an Australian uh, AI company that produced a, pho a photograph and submitted it to a major photographic competition and it won best overall photo, okay? Now, to their credit, they turned down the, mon the money award, okay? I think they just need, wanted the advertisement and saying how good their AI generator was, okay? Um, I believe there is a place in photography for AI work, okay? But it would be a separate category by itself, okay? Uh, so uh, photographs for the assignment category, well, in the three categories that we offer, uh, I don't see uh, AI being acceptable for either one of the three categories. Uh, well, I take that back. If you, if you, you can produce an AI photograph for the color assignment or the uh, um, black and white, but you need to let us know it's AI generated so that we don't send it forward to PSA for judging or, uh, well, I won't say for the critiquing that we do, I'm fine sending it forward and getting the critique if you want, if that's what you want, okay? But we will not send it to inner club, okay? Or a photo competition where AI is not uh, recognized, okay? So we need, if you produce an AI generated photo, we need to know it was AI generated, okay? And for the uh, color in black and white, if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. And we're happy to get it critiqued, okay? But as long as we know that's what it is so that we don't uh, put the club in bad light and go, oh, well, it's AI generated. You shouldn't have submitted it, okay? When you're saying AI, yes, I'm sorry. You to the group, do you mean like sharpening? Uh, no, there's there's artificial intelligent programs to where you just say, uh, produce a photo of a surfer at sunset, oh, uh, riding the yeah. waves, and it goes out there and finds a bunch of stock images and uses graphic design to create the image. Okay. Um, you can submit an image. And then tell it like, okay, I want this image to be a certain way, and it comes up with about fifteen different things that yep. you choose one. That's okay. why I ask. Yeah. So AI yeah, to some people means one thing, and to other people it means completely different. Now then, with that said, uh, that is the stance that, as president, I'm going to put in place until the next board meeting, when the board can discuss this at mm -hmm. length. And if after the board meeting is determined that we need to go a different direction or some changes, uh, we will announce that, okay, when the board has had time to consider it. With that said, uh, every member, um, based on what I said tonight, if you agree with it, or agree with it, and but with this option, or you, you don't agree with it, and you think it should be this option, you need to write an email and send it to the club's email site so that we can take that into consideration. We can have your voice to take into consideration as we discuss it as a board, okay? So that it's just not us 
um, dictating to you what's going to happen. Okay. We want to hear from the membership and get your two cents on this. It's not something we're going to solve tonight in open discussion. Okay. You need to give us what your thoughts are. And, uh, and I would recommend going to the PSA website and looking up the definitions of the color category, the black and white category, nature photography, uh, travel photography, photojournalism, okay? And um, go from there. And we already have some feedback from a couple of people on composites, okay? So I'd like to hear from, as far as I know, we only got two, two feedbacks, right? On composites? I mean, two feedbacks. Uh, we had two people send an email in discussing the composites. The composites have never been allowed for assignment categories. That's been our rule for five years. Oh, really? Yeah. No replacements. Everything has got to be original. That's been on our stated rules on our website for years. Okay, that's on there? Yeah. No, right. Nothing about artificial intelligence. So, but I don't, can we have a raise of hands? Is anyone using AI for pictures? I, I've been around, there's a program called Jasper AI. So Jasper is a program that basically writes essays and blog posts for you. And then also has a thing called, a new thing came out a few months ago called Jasper Art. And all you do is you tell it, just design a picture that has this kind of style, these kind of color. So it's, you're not really creating anything. Computer's creating everything for you. You're just, you're just giving a parameter. So how that could be new, that's something that you created, it's really not. So you just say, I want something in with this type of artist. Um, I want these kind of colors. Basically, you can tell it anything you want, and it will generate it for you. So that's just my take. But if you guys want to check it out, it's called Jasper, J-A-N-P-E-R, Jasper Art. Yeah, there's a number of different ones. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. one of the ones that's more popular. Yeah. Like, I played around with it a little bit. It's, 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 it's interesting. It's interesting. Okay. It's not really something um, that I'm creating. I'm just telling you to create something for me. So... I don't know how you would judge that because it's really the program that's doing it, not you. Exactly. There, there, there was a photographer that submitted a bunch of his AI images to the copyright office, and the copyright office refused to copyright them. And their criteria was that it wasn't human generated, it wasn't generated by human. So he, in turn, is now suing them to change their decision. But they're going by all the rules and, and, and regulations they had. And then that's the bottom line is it wasn't generated by a human. And that's what they consider to be hard. Okay. All right. So based on what Holly just said, as far as composites go, uh, in the assignment category, no composites. Okay. I, I'm assuming composites is composite okay in color of white and white. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. And, and, and that it's composites are okay as long as all the parts of it are yours. Okay. So all the parts still has to be yours, but only allowed in color and black and white. Oh. Okay. Uh, Larry? About original work, what if you inadvertently have in the background of something you're shooting, like saying it can't be composite. picture? It may be part of an advertisement or something on a wall outside or something. Or if you're if you're doing street art, you're taking a photograph of somebody's street art that they painted on a building. That would be no, correct? You can't do that to submit. No, that's a photograph. No. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and then also, what about a backdrop that has a pattern in it? Like some of them you see wood planking or something. Is that allowed or no? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about a screen and printing backdrop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi. How, how far back can we go? For assignment to, is yeah. October 12th of 2022. Two. Two. Now, I'm going to send you an email then. Uh oh. About changing, like you said, we can change the sky. What well, if we, what, we shot, what if we shot the sky three years ago? <laughs> well, uh, send us an email. I would, that's yeah. what I, I, the board will address it. Is that date a floating date each month forward? It moves up a month? No. Okay, it's just a stagnant date. Well, yeah. it's the 12th. The 12th. Oh, it was the October, okay. the date of our October meeting is when we announced oh, assignment okay. themes for the following you know, year. I, I, I guess I heard them pretty much. Because the time frame from October to now is very, very little. 
and I have I was in vacation in October and, and September. I have a lot of good photographs, you know, and I cannot use them. You know, That's you can use show them in color and black and white. Yeah, uh, the 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 October twelfth of twenty twenty two to current okay is what you can submit to assignment but color and black and white can be 10 years ago or from september or from september when the assignment is in january you have only two months yes three months. that's correct so a lot of people go shoot the weekend before the assignment <laughs> yeah yeah so obviously september uh well actually obviously december is the one that you get the most time to shoot, okay? So you might want to be thinking about what the December topic is. I would keep the list of what all the topics are with me all the time because you never know when you're going to see something that fits a topic that may be six months from now, okay? They're listed on our website under the assignments tab, and they're also on our Facebook page under files. Okay. But I really wanted to address the AI thing and um, replacing <laughs> skies and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I, and we may find that what we already have in writing is good enough. Okay. And we may not make changes. Uh, and maybe it's just me being too liberal uh, in the past that's causing the problem. Uh, okay. So I want to announce the winner, okay? And the winner of the assignment category. Oh, nope, I went backwards, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, our winner is Melissa. Congratulations, Melissa, okay? And- Thank you. Melissa, before I mute, uh, is she still online? Yes, okay, before I, I mute and let you say something, I'm gonna give you an option. You can take this uh, gift card for a 16 by 20 uh, Pro Luster print from Digital Pro Lab, uh, or you can trade that gift card in for a, a wine from uh, Wembley Winery. Hmm. I think. Hmm. But you don't get. But you don't get to pick the wine. <laughs> Um, I think I'm going to take the gift card because I, I need to sit down and get some stuff printed. And this might be one that I print just because I like it a lot. And, and, um, like who, I guess, uh, who was it that did the water and oil we were talking about in the light just a little bit ago of how long it takes you to get everything set up this yeah. way longer to set up than it did to really shoot and I shot a lot you know until you could get it till I could get it the way I wanted it but there were so many good ones this month that I had no idea I would win but thank you guys thanks okay it's an awesome photo oh. thank you congratulations thank you Are we having technical difficulty? Was the meeting adjourned or?
<laughs> it got quiet all of a sudden. Looks like Victor's talking. <laughs> Is he still on? He's still on. Yeah. I, We're not um, hearing. We're not hearing anything. I wanted to go back to the art council's uh, art mixer. Uh, we have a photographer that's going to uh, be the volunteer photographer, uh, but they're asking for, uh, uh, they need four volunteers to man a booth of the desk for the entry. And that the times are 530 to 630 or 630 to 730. Okay. Hey, um, Is there anyone that would volunteer to man one of those? Yes, yeah, yeah, I'll do five thirty to six. I just okay. <laughs> I just texted uh, Suzanne, Holly. I can do five thirty to six thirty. And Melissa can do five thirty. Do what? Melissa can do five thirty. Okay, Melissa's five thirty. Mm -hmm. What time does Suzanne want to do? Five thirty. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I can do five thirty. So, all right, so Melissa and Suzanne would do 530, 630? Yes. Okay. I'll get you the details, okay? All right. And I'll let Felicia know that uh, you're going to be manning the desk. Now, um, that's great. Now, hey, Suzanne and Melissa, take yeah. your cameras, and then when you get off the desk and you're walking around, take photos and also take photos of bill taking photos okay and then send those to me okay because that will go into our archive when we submit our application for uh the ps the psa service award okay uh to okay. document things we do around the community for the community okay okay and then okay. That's all I got. Okay, guys, it's uh, eight thirty. I'm gonna go ahead and close the meeting down. Thanks for. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump through there. Uh, I'm gonna show you. Any new members? Any new new people? Can you do a sign up sheet right here? Hang on, and I'm gonna get to the uh, assignment for next month. Water features. Hey, everybody here in the library, the assignment for next month is water feature. Okay. Uh, All right. And we go ahead and end the recording.